Please welcome Tabitha! lacquer, perms, hair dryers, and setting lotion, and it was quite fabulous. And I thought it was just the most remarkable smell I've ever, ever smelled. I still actually, it gets me all excited when I smell it today. And I would sit there with her week after week and just watch these people that I thought were so extraordinary, and those people were hairdressers. And then I realised that I wanted to be a hairdresser, so I was like many of you people out there, I cut the Barbie doll's hair, I'd play with everyone's hair, anyone that would let me, I'd get to sit there and I'd start running my fingers through the hair. And my parents owned nightclubs, and if any of you have read my book, you know what kind of nightclubs. <laughs> so, there were drag clubs for those of you that don't know. <laughs> My parents own nightclubs, and you know, it's kind of not an appropriate place, some would say, having a young child in a kind of club that has drag queens, although I thought it was quite fabulous. They taught me how to walk in these, it's not bad. So, I would say. I feel like Dorothy. I, I don't want to go home though. So I would sit backstage and I'd watch the girls get ready and I'd watch them do their makeup and put these fabulous costumes on and the last thing they always did was put their wig on. And as soon as they put their wig on, everything came together for me. And I realised at a very, 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 very young age that it was all about the hair. Because the makeup was fabulous and the clothes were fabulous and the heels were fabulous and it was all fabulous but nothing came together until they put their wig on and the hair totally finished the look. And that's when I realised that I wanted to be a hairdresser. So I was lucky enough when I was 14 because I was a brat. Can you believe it? Me. Opinionated, loudmouthed, did what I wanted to do, all of those things. <laughs> Haven't changed much, have I? So I was lucky enough that at 14 I decided I wanted to be a hairdresser. And my mother said, all right, here's the deal. You can be a hairdresser, but you have to go to school and finish your education, just in case, you know, you change your mind. I was like, all right, that's fine. So December, I have been hairdressing 31 years. that there is not a day that goes by that I do not say thank you to this profession and this craft and this job that I do. I absolutely love it. As much today as I did 30 years ago. None of it's changed. And it's interesting, because we saw in that video, 
you know, did you ever think your career would go here? You're off your rocker. No. <laughs> I just wanted to play with people's hair. I was like a lot of you out there. I didn't know what I was going to be when I grew up, except I wanted to be a hairdresser. That's all I knew. All I knew was that I wanted to be a hairdresser, touch people's hair, make them feel good about themselves, work in that environment that was creative. To me, hairdressers were rock stars, and I wanted to be a rock star. And that's what a hairdresser was. And I, and we still are rock stars. So, I never knew where my career was going. All I knew was that I had to go through four long years of an apprenticeship in Australia that was a very, very long time. At times, I thought it was going to do my head in, but the one thing I never said is I'm giving up, ever, because I loved hairdressing so much, and in those days, when I was young and I was brought up, we had to work in the salon and we went to college, and they were mean. They'd make you get on your hands and knees and like scrub the floor with a toothbrush, right? And they'd make you do all these things that had nothing to do with hairdressing. And I kept thinking, God, this is awful. But you know what? I love doing hair so much. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to make it through. And I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to be better. And I am going to make it. And the thing that got me through was my love of hair. And then something very <coughs> strange happened. I went to work at a salon. During my apprenticeship, I changed salons, and I met this man, and he was actually my first rock star that I met, and his name is Mr. Scott Cole. And I'm sure Scott's dying somewhere out there, and I think I've told Scott this story, and maybe I have, maybe I have, I don't know. I was very young, and I was still working on my apprenticeship, and the salon I worked for um, it was a very, you know, good salon and embraced education, etc, etc. And Scott came to Australia with another artist that was from Germany, I believe. And Scott did a hair show. And it was my first hair show I ever went to. And Scott had a really bad perm at the time. Mine was probably even worse than his was. And I know there are photographs out there to prove it. And I sat in that audience. And I listened to his accent, and I watched him. I couldn't really understand the German guy. His accent was a bit too thick for me. I could actually get through Scott's. And I watched them both, and I was like, oh my god, they're rock stars. They're actual, bona fide rock stars. And not only are they rock stars, they just taught me something. They just taught me how to do something and how to make myself better. And I will say it, Scott Paul, thank you very much. You don't realise this, but you may have changed my life. Yeah.